This is Mac OS Ken. A wet bullish note ahead of Apple earnings. Apple's dating game has gone poorly in the Netherlands, and the tiny Apple TV Plus market share is a tiny bit bigger. It is Tuesday, the 25th of January, 2022. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by BetterHelp. Online counseling that's there for you. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash macOSCan. This show is also sponsored by Kanji, device management for your Apple environment. New hires, am I right? With Kanji, a new Mac can be ready for your new hire quick and easy with all the apps and settings they need. If you've got somebody new coming into sales or data analysis, you know which apps need to go on which machine. So does Kanji, thanks to Blueprints. Blueprints let you easily assign the right apps, security controls, and automations to each device based on team, department, or location works great for education environments as well. Kanji can help you keep things organized, spending less time managing devices, and more time helping people who need it. And of course, Kanji keeps that blueprint. If an app is uninstalled or a setting changed, the Kanji agent detects it and fixes it, saving you time and stress. Go to kanji.io slash macOSCan for a free demo and trial. That's K-A-N-D-J-I kanji dot I-O slash macOS Ken. Find out why companies like Segment, Lacework, Allbirds, and others use Kanji for zero-touch Apple device management. K-A-N-D-J-I Again, that is kanji.io slash macOSCan. Your free demo and trial are waiting at kanji.io slash macOSCan. Wedbush analyst Daniel Ives is getting in his guesses for this week's Apple earnings. Well, reported this week. We're actually talking about earnings for the first quarter of fiscal year 2022 a.k.a. the holiday quarter. Numbers for that will hit this Thursday. Apple 3.0 ran part of a note Ives wrote, wherein he called for Apple to report revenue of $118.3 billion and earnings per share of $1.88. He figures iPhone 13 sales were robust globally during the strong holiday season, which you can expect to hear Apple say. He also says how many of those he thinks Apple sold. Wherefore, I know not, since that is something Apple will not say. The company stopped reporting unit sales in the first quarter of fiscal year 2019. Mr. Ives has an outperform rating on Apple shares. He set the Wedbush price target on the shares at $200. And the parade of guesses continues ahead of this week's earnings report. Thursday is when Apple will report earnings for the first quarter of fiscal year 2022. Numbers will hit Apple's site at the close of trading, 1.30 Pacific, 4.30 Eastern. Then Apple CEO Tim Cook and CFO Luca Maestri will get on the blower with financial folks. That starts at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern. Hot Pockets and High C to be served after. You can stream it as it happens on Apple's investor site. The company will make it available as a podcast soon after. It'll be blogged about. It'll be tweeted. TikTokers might even do whatever it is TikTokers do. Lights both high and low will be hit here the day after the call. When analysts start chatting up Apple execs this week, there is likely to be no shortage of questions about hardware shortages. 9to5Mac lays out some of what it'll be listening for. While the call will cover the holiday shopping season, the piece says it will also cover the ongoing impacts of the chip shortage that is limiting some product availability, as well as impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. Running through a few impacted products, 9to5Mac says the new 14-inch MacBook Pro has a delivery date that starts by the end of February, 
and the 16-inch MacBook Pro can take up to eight weeks to be delivered. That's according to a report from Mac Rumors. Despite four months on the market, the piece says iPhone 13 Pro can still take up to three to five days for delivery. The report says that shows that manufacturing disruptions are still affecting Apple, though in fairness it could also speak to robust demand. And delivery times for the 256GB iPad Mini can take as long as six weeks, according to 9to5Mac. They blame the chip shortage for that. Sounds sort of dire, though it's worth noting that Apple was able to deliver on just about everything over the holidays, uh, polishing cloths and iPads not included. Additionally, knowing of the headwinds, Apple execs said on the last call that they expected solid year-over-year revenue growth for the holiday quarter. Things are far from settled for Apple in the Netherlands. You may remember the report from the start of the year that had Dutch regulators saying that Apple would be required to let dating apps in the Netherlands employ payment methods besides Apple's own in-app payment system. Halfway through the month, Apple said it would comply, though it also planned to appeal the decision. Last week, the Netherlands Authority for Consumers and Markets, or ACM, said it would assess whether Apple's compliance met the requirements that ACM had imposed. It seems they have decided it did not. A piece from TechCrunch says the Netherlands Competition Authority has fined Apple 5 million euros, roughly $5.6 million U.S., for failing to comply with conditions in an order requiring it to allow local dating apps to make use of third-party payment technology in their apps. The biggest problem seems to be that Apple has only proposed solutions and not actually implemented them. The ACM was looking for the third-party payment process to be live in the middle of January, not just for Apple to have a plan. For what it's worth, TechCrunch says the ACM's fines are capped at a maximum of 50 million euros in relation to this particular order. Apple 3.0 had Loop Ventures principal Gene Munster figuring it would take Apple about 30 minutes to make this week's fine of 5 million euros, which I guess means 5 hours for the full 50 million. While TechCrunch also notes how affordable even the full 50 million euros would be, That's not Apple's biggest worry. The piece says the bigger concern is the globe-spanning number of competition complaints against the App Store, including in the EU, the UK, Asia, and the US. In the short term, says TechCrunch, and or failing a substantial global competition reform offer by Apple that would make App Store competition complaints go away, a regulatory patchwork looms for iOS app developers as each market or region's regulators turn their attention to assessing Apple's small print. Another member of Team Titans out the door, iLound, says Joe Bass. Is it Bass or Bass? B-A-S-S. What do you think? Bass? Bass? I'm going Bass. Joe Bass, head software engineer at Apple Car, has recently updated his LinkedIn profile to show that he is now working for Meta, formerly Facebook, and assigned to a new position. Bass has been working since 2015 at Apple's Autonomous Systems as Lead Engineering Program Manager. Probably should say, had been. Of his new role, the piece says Bass is the Mixed Reality Technology Technical Program Management (laughs) Director at Meta. Pretty sure that will not fit on a business card, but... Ooh, the business cards in the metaverse. More news in a moment, but first a word from BetterHelp, online counseling that's there for you. Is something getting in the way of your happiness? I hope not, and if not, yay! If so, though, help is out there. BetterHelp, sponsor of today's show. Here's how it works. You go to their app or their website, you answer a few questions, and BetterHelp goes to work finding the right licensed professional therapist for you. Then you work with them on stress, anxiety, grief, self-esteem issues. 
whatever it is that's holding you back. And you do it in a way that's most comfortable for you. My last counselor and I worked a couple of ways. Text messages sometimes, phone calls other times. All of it safe and secure inside the BetterHelp app. If you're hoping your problems are just going to go away by themselves, they're probably not gonna. But help is out there. Better help. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting today's sponsor at betterhelp.com slash macOSCan. H-E-L-P. That's betterhelp.com slash Mac OS can. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that is BetterHelp, H E L P, betterhelp.com slash Mac OS can. And thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's show. From the almost nowhere to go but up file, Good news for Apple TV+. Plus. Cult of Mac has new numbers from Just Watch that show the Cupertino streamer growing its market share in the States. According to the report, Apple TV Plus has 5% of the U.S. streaming market, according to Just Watch. While that makes it a small player, the service started 2021 with just a 3% share, so the year saw significant growth. Others faltered though one could argue they could afford to lose a bit. According to the firm, Netflix fell from a roughly 30% share of the U.S. streaming market at the start of 2021 to under 25% at year's end. While Amazon Prime Video's fall was not as pronounced, the piece says it slipped from over 20% in January 2021 to under 20% by December. According to Just Watch, Netflix and Prime Video continually lost market share as other platforms, such as HBO Max, Paramount Plus, and Discovery Plus, gained momentum. All of that said, props to the cult for one big, pedantic point. Just Watch didn't reveal estimates for exact subscriber numbers for any of the streaming services, just the relative popularity of each. So don't take these figures to automatically mean that Netflix and Amazon are losing subscribers. If Apple and others are growing the streaming market, Netflix's subscriber base doesn't have to decline for its share of the market to decline. Hello Tomorrow is saying hello to a new cast member. Deadline says Dagmara Dominchik is joining the Apple TV Plus series, headlined by Billy Crudup. The piece says Hello Tomorrow is set in a retro future world. It revolves around a group of traveling salesmen hawking lunar timeshares. Crudup, who also executive produces, stars as Jack, a salesman of great talent and ambition whose unshakable faith in a brighter tomorrow inspires his co-workers and revitalizes his desperate customers, but threatens to leave him dangerously lost in the very dream that sustains him. Crude up you know from the films Almost Famous and The Watchmen, as well as the Apple TV Plus series The Morning Show. Dominic you know from the Netflix film The Lost Daughter and the HBO series Succession. Others in the cast include Jackie Weaver, Hank Azaria, Hanifa Wood, Alison Pill, Nick Padani, and Duchesne Williams. No word on when viewers can say hello to Hello Tomorrow. And finally today, still more award nominations for Apple TV+, Plus. this time on Looks Alone. Apple Insider says the Cupertino streamer has picked up five nominations for the 26th Annual Excellence in Production Design Awards from the Art Directors Guild. The piece says those awards honor art direction in TV shows, films, music videos, commercials, and animated features, Titles nominated from Apple TV Plus include The Tragedy of Macbeth, Foundation, The Morning Show, Schmigadoon, and Ted Lasso. Those last two are facing off against each other. Always seems unfair. Apple actually picked up three other nominations, though these are not tied to the streaming service. 
the ads and promotional videos, Saving Simon, shot on iPhone 13 Pro, Introducing iPhone 13 Pro, and the Apple Music piece, Billie Eilish, Happier Than Ever, all seem to be up for the same award. That seems even less fair than the forced fight between Ted Lasso and Schmigadoon. The Art Directors Guild Awards will be handed out on Saturday, the 5th of March. Mac OS Can, brought to you by me and sponsored by Kanji, device management for your Apple environment. Learn more at K-A-N-D-J-I, Kanji. Dot io slash macOS can. This show is also sponsored by BetterHelp, online counseling that's there for you. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash macOS can. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media, online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macOSCan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from macOS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.